Hello, everyone. We'll give it a minute here and let everyone get in. We'll start this webinar. All right. I'd like to welcome you to the September 2023 edition of Venza's Hospitality Webinar Series, our series of 30 minute conversations about critical issues facing hospitality. My name is Sean Shields, and I'm the brand ambassador here at Venza, and I'll be your host today. Each quarter, we leverage the knowledge of our own in-house experts and scan the threat landscape to bring you the most relevant and important data protection news for hospitality. The topic for today's webinar is staying ahead on compliance. We have an update on evolving regulatory requirements for data privacy, ransomware payments, and incident reporting that have to to have the potential to impact organizations of all sizes. We'll also cover new and exciting developments from Venza that you won't want to miss. With that, let's get right into today's main topic, compliance. For that, I'd like to welcome Casey Harrigan to today's webinar. He is the technical communicator here at Venza and has been researching regulatory developments this year. You may have seen his writing in our weekly article series and monthly digest, The Venza Echo, which we will be talking about today. Casey, how are you? I'm doing great. Thanks, Sean. I'm Good happy to, to be you. here and to have the opportunity to speak with you all today on the topic of compliance. Data protection efforts effectively have a dual purpose. First, most prominently, they help keep you secure, avoiding breaches that can undermine guest trust. Second, which is an often underrated benefit, they help organizations meet legal requirements, which can head off costly enforcement actions or litigation. Today, we're gonna to focus on the latter purpose. Where do we see regulatory change occurring and what should you know about how to stay ahead of those shifts and remain compliant? Compliance is an extremely broad area. Based on our research, however, we found three main areas of focus and I'd like to take a moment to address each one. First is data privacy. Interest in data privacy has been ramping up globally. Since the passage of the landmark GDPR law in Europe, jurisdictions around the world have increasingly recognized the importance of protecting consumer data and have taken steps to require that businesses handle that information properly. In fact, in August, we saw India finally pass a major data privacy law that had been years in the making. This impacts both those that do business directly in the country and those that simply offer goods and services available to residents of India, something that we'll discuss in just a moment. In the US, there's currently no comprehensive federal legislation on data privacy. Instead, regulatory requirements are established at the state level. There, we've seen a flurry of activity. 2023 has seen new data privacy legislation enacted in Delaware, Florida, Indiana, Montana, Oregon, Tennessee, and Texas. This is in addition to existing legislation recently passed in California, Colorado, Iowa, Utah, and Virginia. This enacted legislation is just a fraction of the total number of bills considered. Given the clear interest, it's very likely that we'll see further action in additional states in the near future. As for the content of these laws and what they require, every law is somewhat unique, but there are certain common elements that we found that we wanted to highlight. They fall within two categories. First, consumer rights, which refers to the ability of customers to control how their data is maintained and used. Typical rights granted include the right to opt out and be exempt from data collection altogether, and the right to access, correct, or delete data. And second, controller obligations. Most data privacy law uses the language of controllers, which practically includes businesses like many of yours that make decisions about what data guests of, of guests will be collected and how it will be handled. Typical requirements that these laws place on businesses include mandatory privacy notices on websites and documentation, requiring the receipt of customer consent before data can be collected, and establishing purpose limitations, which limit collection to specific purposes. For example, only those that are necessary to conduct legitimate business functions. As you can see, the substance of laws are often complex. These are merely a few examples of what they might include. This makes it important to stay aware of the rules that might apply to your business. I also wanted to mention two additional items that are related to data privacy laws. First, these rules may apply even when you have no physical location in that state or jurisdiction. 
Under a concept known as extraterritoriality, the effect of laws can extend beyond borders. For example, the law that was passed in the state of Montana applies either to businesses in Montana or to businesses that produce products or services that are targeted to residents of Montana. And second, non-compliance with these rules risks penalties even without a data breach. If you're found to not be operating according to the standard, you could be subject to enforcement actions. Now, let's move on to our second area of compliance, ransomware payments. By now, most Venza clients are probably aware of ransomware, a type of cyber attack where criminals extort their victims for payment in order to remove malicious software. For businesses, paying ransoms is a classic collective action problem. In theory, the best overall course of action would be for all entities to refuse to pay. If ransoms universally yielded no return, there would be no incentive for malicious actors to use them. This, combined with expert concerns about the low number of successes in retrieving stolen data, has created growing pressure to control payments. In the US, several states have prohibited government agencies from complying with ransomware demands. Florida and North Carolina already have laws in the books and bills are pending in Arizona, New York, Pennsylvania, and Texas. There are signs of increased regulation in Europe as well. Under the NIS directive, EU member states can potentially impose fines for paying ransoms. For now, most rules are limited to governmental entities rather than the private sector, but this is an area to watch. And certainly, if your business is subject to ransomware, be sure to consult with legal counsel in addition to cybersecurity experts before taking action. And now to our third and final area of focus, reporting requirements. Rules increasingly require companies to provide a public notification in the event of a cyber incident or breach. To understand why this has been a point of emphasis, it helps to recognize that there's a fundamental tension. On one hand, consumers wanna know about incidents quickly, so they have a leg up in protecting their personal information. On the other hand, hoteliers want as much time as possible before making a statement to investigate the breach, determine the amount of exposure, and put together a clear explanation for external parties. Incident reporting rules have long existed in both the United States and Europe. In the US, as with data privacy, they've been primarily set at the state level. However, for the most part, they've been general and have not included specific deadlines. In 2023, once again, the tide again appears to be tipping in favor of consumers. Specifically, the Securities Exchange Commission, or SEC, recently adopted a new cybersecurity disclosure rule. This applies to hotel companies whose securities are registered with the SEC and requires that companies who experience a cybersecurity attack publicly disclose the impact of the attack within four days. The takeaway here is that based on the trends toward these requirements shows the importance of creating and testing a strong incident response plan. When a company has only 96 hours to report a cybersecurity incident, it cannot waste time trying to create a playbook to respond to it. That playbook must be in place and accurate in advance. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Casey. Well, here we are. To get more insight, I'm pleased to be able to introduce to you Jonathan Gonzalez Esquire, Senior Legal Counsel with Centrio. Hi, Jonathan. How are you doing? Hey, Sean. Good, good. Thank you guys all for having me on. It's uh, been already interesting to hear about some new developments in this area, and things are changing all the time, as we know. Well, let's hear a little bit about your experience and your background uh, with this topic. Yeah, so I've been working with Centria, who's an e-learning company uh, focused on compliance and employment law happenings for the, about the past 10 years. Prior to that, I represented a lot of hotel organizations for a law firm um, in labor and employment matters. So my bread and butter is labor and employment, but I touch all aspects of compliance. And we are really heavy right now in the data protection cybersecurity area. It's been a big focus, a big key for a lot of our customers, too. So we're happy and thrilled to be here working with you guys, um, making life easier for people that are on our panel or on our um, audience today, for sure. Well, we're glad you're here. We wanted to get your perspective on some of these common questions uh, that we've heard from our own clients. Uh, to start with, here's the first one. With all the regulatory changes that we have discussed here today, how should a small or medium-sized hotelier avoid being overwhelmed and go about verifying that they are compliant? 
it it definitely is easy to get overwhelmed without a doubt particularly in the smaller company context you know we can talk all day about your larger corporate organizations that are going to have structure with legal departments and compliance departments but i think that that's a really good question for the smaller hotelier because i understand having been in those spaces with just one two three properties or maybe more or less that um you know the key really has to be for the person handling those functions to keep their eyes and ears open as to what's going on with some of these changes in the law. Casey brought up a bunch of things that have been going on in the data protection, cybersecurity area, ransomware and everything else. And as you saw, a lot of those are localized. So you might not right. necessarily hear about it in the same degree that you would if something came up at a federal legislation level, like we all have heard about GDPR. We know about that in Europe. We know about that, how it, how it goes. But here, you saw that map come up and something may be going on in your area. So I think that that makes it, Sean, even more critical to focus your attention on what's going on. That might be either through browsing the internet or, your, or setting up your Twitter feed to figure out what news is that's relevant to this area. If you're handling that function, you may wear a lot of hats. I wear a lot of hats and I know I have to look at a lot of different things. Sometimes they may not be all that interesting, but the level of risk that's here is really important. And kind of dovetailing on that, your workforce is a really critical element of this too. You've got to listen up to things that they're hearing and seeing and watching. We heard reporting you know, in the context of customers and, and guests seeing data breaches or however it may come up with those requirements but also you have a duty to provide your workforce with the ability to find a way to come to you with things that they may be seeing or may come up that's particularly critical if someone receives like a malicious email or something like that they may want to delete it and go away and not have to deal with it but if you right. make it clear to your workforce that you're going to do something about it and that they're a critical element of this, it can only help. And to get them prepared for that, you know, of course we've got to talk about training. There's a lot of different ways that you can achieve a training concept depending on the size of your organization. You know, we do some e-learning type stuff, but also facilitating workshops and other things. All of the stuff that we're here to help with, meaning Venza and Centrio are the ways that you can educate and be best prepared to not have your head in the sand when there is a change. I mean, I know that on a near daily, if not weekly basis, I see something that I have to look into that it might not be my key area of expertise, but I go, whoa, this may really apply to us. And I think a good way to stay informed is exactly what we're doing right here. There's a lot of this kind of stuff out here right now that people can listen to us go back and forth live about and eat lunch over or learn that is kind of no skin off of your back because it may not be anything more than attention bringing to some critical issues, but that will give you the opportunity to ask those right questions when you do have the opportunity to get in front of a lawyer or a compliance professional or someone that's schooled in this. And I think the key end of this long-winded answer to your question is going to be how are we going to get in front of these issues i mean and and, right. and this is all of the ways that we can effectuate that well those were great points i mean multiplying yourself and just putting that step forward you know multiplying yourself through uh, employee awareness right uh more people more eyes um i wanted to tackle this tricky subject of cross-border legal effects certain regulatory requirements apply outside of the jurisdiction that has passed them for instance a company may have obligations under gdpr even if they do not have locations in europe and this is a challenge for clients because the scope of regulation is unclear do you have advice for how they should understand or approach this question i think you've kind of touched on it a little bit but go ahead yeah. I mean, it, it it's a second part of the first question, really. And so right. the first answer is slightly similar, but I think that a little bit different. I said, keep your eyes and ears open, but now when we get into extraterritoriality of jurisdiction, you're starting to get really complicated because how is something going on out there, either outside of this country, outside of my state, outside of my municipality, gonna impact me? And I think that's where it becomes critical to not just keep our eyes and ears open, but also to begin to take the requisite time to understand what's in those regulations. And that is where we're gonna breed more questions. So 
when we have something that requires action to be taken that we learn about, say I'll use GDPR for example, and we have to implement the proper privacy measures that are going on and change our system, we right. need to have a village to do that. And if we're not as professionals in the area or leaders effectuating whatever policy it might be, we're not going to be able to do that without understanding what's involved in those regulations. So kind of going on that practical measure too, how are we as leaders taking note and inventory of the kind of policies, procedures, just to use data protection as the example? What are we doing? How are we documenting that? How are we letting people report? Because all of these things that we're doing to comply with the laws that we know we have to comply are going to relate to some things that we don't. And again, getting ahead of the curve to the degree we can, we can only do so much, but that's gonna require us to, to do what we don't want to do and spend some money talking to people that have further expertise. But the conversation is gonna go a lot better, whether it be attending a training or talking to a compliance professional, if we self-educate ourselves from the very beginning. And I think like the smaller organization that we're working with, the more critical it is that those people that are gonna to have to be jack of all trades take that time to self-educate on these topics. And those of us that are sitting here on this uh, panel and the audience of this webinar today are, are, are certainly taking the first step in doing that, unquestionably. Right. And last question here, what further changes do you see on the horizon? Are there any areas of compliance that you would recommend our clients keep their eye on in the near future? We've touched on the areas that I've really seen as they relate to data protection. I mean, obviously there's further cybersecurity regulation that comes down the pipe. There's payment storage information that's really important for hoteliers to understand because they're storing at different points, different information and maybe in someone's app or whatever it might be. You know, I know that I've been hit with um, stolen data in the hotel context because I store my information to quicker book hotels. So how are we constantly staying ahead of that and what state, local, and maybe ever federal or extraterritorial out of the country jurisdiction are we gonna be seeing? Things that are gonna protect consumers and keep commerce moving forward are obviously gonna be critical. Um, outside of the data protection cybersecurity area, I'd um, be remiss to not ever talk about the primary area that I represent companies in, and that's employment law. Compliance and employment law really are arms of the same thing because we have to comply for our workforces as employers with a lot of different things. So when you start looking at wage and hour laws and EEO type stuff and health and safety, those are all different avenues of the same stuff that we've been talking about all day here today. So putting a plan, a program, an education schedule, all of the things that we've talked about from the great questions that you've had strategically, are going to make compliance with the law, with regulation, supporting the law, with policies that you've implemented yourself a lot easier. So we hope that people can come to areas like us to listen to us talk for half an hour and hopefully work together to, to, to protect those smaller employers because they need it just as much as anyone does, if not more. Well, thank you so much. Uh, for that, Jonathan. We really appreciate it. And thank you for joining us today and sharing your insight and your expertise and you. talking about, uh, you know, the ways that we can just put a foot forward is, sure. is going to help us, help us all so that at least we can have the right questions to ask when we meet with experts like yourself uh, yeah. to try and protect our investments. I so, think to try, to try and give out and out answers in half an hour would be taking expectations of something you can get, but just getting the strategic aspects of how are we going to ensure that we're asking the right questions really was the number one point when I watched everything before and I figured we'd get some questions regarding like, what are we going to do? You know, I we can't reverse engineer the whole thing and fix anything right. that's already going on. You have to have counsel and people involved in that. But really, if you're here, you're certainly taking the right first step and that is where it all flows from. And I hope that we were able to put it into a package that kind of flows down from the idea of seeking information, which is what we really should be here to be doing. 
That is it precisely. And, you know, we're only limited to a half hour because network won't allow us any more time. You know, we pay a lot for this bandwidth. So uh, sure. we'd like to thank our overlords. I'm kidding. We have no overlords. We could do it for an hour, but <laughs> we find that this format works a whole lot better. Um, thanks again, Jonathan. We really appreciate it. I'm not seeing any questions from the audience here okay. or anything, but please punch those in. We will get those answers. Uh, and email you that uh, if if uh, Jonathan uh, it doesn't field it right here for us today. Love but uh, thanks again, Jonathan. We appreciate it. I'd like to now turn it over to uh, Barbara Espinoza, Product Marketing Director here at Venza, to discuss some new product updates, which may help you in the efforts to remain compliant. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Sean. Thank you. Well, the product team at Venza has been very busy this quarter as always. We're working to bring you innovative and engaging uh, new products to help you protect your, yours and your guest data, right? So today I wanted to highlight a few of our new products in line with our main topic of today, compliance. Uh, we're very excited about this one. First, I wanna talk about our new resources, legislation briefs. As Jonathan mentioned, the first step is to keep your eyes and ears open, stay informed and be aware of the changes uh, happening in the compliance landscape. So Venza maintains a library of over a dozen legislation briefs covering individual data privacy laws as well as other compliance topics. And this one page resources provide a quick overview of the law's core elements and advice for how to comply. We've updated our library with the new briefs covering each new data privacy law passed this year, and we continue doing so as new legislation arises. Um, the second one I want to highlight is pen testing. We also, also mentioned today the importance of identifying and anticipating risks. So we're very thrilled to share the news that Venza now offers pen testing, led by in-house expert members of our security team. And this is actually required for PCI 4.0 compliance on a regular basis. So we would help you comply just with this product. Uh, pen testing simulates cyber attacks against uh, your computer system to find vulnerabilities using the same tools and techniques that criminals do to locate, catalog, and report your points of weakness. Our white hat ethical hacking team will deploy a variety of state-of-the-art methods to attempt to locate those vulnerabilities, allowing us to find them before someone else does. And uh, better re defense requires more than just identifying those, those vulnerabilities. It also must test them to map their risks and help you prepare for it. Uh, as always, we're bringing our hospitality expertise to prepare, targeting the unique vulnerabilities that are common to hoteliers to deliver a plan testing product that is unmatched in its effectiveness. And uh, third but not least, uh, we're also introducing industry-leading security awareness training now available in an on-site format. So expert instructors will come to your property, offering a quick and easy way to certify large groups of employees in the fundamentals of data protection. Again, going back to the first point that Jonathan mentioned, uh, bringing, multiplying yourself and uh, bringing your, your team up to date, uh, informing them, training them, and making them aware of all the risks out there so they can be uh, your eyes and ears everywhere in your properties. Um, so this Pathfinder training includes a 90-minute training session led by Venza experts, along with training guides that will serve to support the instruction. Following the in-person training session, Pathfinder enhancement subscribers will gain also access to a trove of reinforcement materials that will maintain awareness for your teams. And that's all I have to share today. Back to you, Sean. Thanks so much, Barbara. Now we're going to talk about one of my favorite things uh, where we get to get out and see all of you events here at uh, with Venza. And uh, the first on the list is Independent Hotel Show, September 20th through the 21st. That's going to be in Miami, Florida with Julie Barter, Global EVP of Sales. She'll be exhibiting and joined by her colleagues at, from Cybertech MSSP in booth 133. So catch uh, us there at that show. Next up, we have the Lodging Conference, September 18th through the 21st in Phoenix, Arizona. Scott Fisher, Senior VP of Sales for Venza, will be attending that. So you definitely want to 
come out. Great event, and I'm sure we'll see you there. We'll have a good time. Buy Tax Symposium, October 9th through the 11th, and that's going to be in Key Largo, Florida. Julie Barter, Global EVP of Sales for Venza, will be attending that as well. And then next on our list is Historic Hotels Annual Conference and Gala, October 9th through the 13th at the Wigrom Resort in Phoenix, Arizona. David Neal, CTO of Cybertech MSSP, will be attending. And we have HFTP Annual Convention, October 18th through the 20th in Indianapolis. Julie Barter, Global EB EVP of Sales, and Boone, Customer Success Manager at Cybertech MSSP, and David Neal, CTO of Cybertech MSSP, will be at the event. Next and last but not least, Bytech Owners Conference, the 5th through the 7th of November in Nassau, Bahamas. Julie Barter, Global EVP of Sales, will be attending that as well. So there are all of your events. Mark them on your calendar. They will be on our website at venzagroup.com under the events tab if you want to register, get some links, get some more information. But uh, this wraps up this edition of the hospitality webinar series we want to thank all of you for attending we appreciate the opportunity to share insights that are so central to security and vitality of hospitality if you liked what you saw here today we encourage you to visit our website venzagroup.com and register to attend our next webinar in early december we'll be discussing the brand new and very important PCI version 4.0 standard that will be coming into effect in March of 2024, just around the corner. You'll find out what's changing with PCI DSS when changes will enter into force and how you should prepare to remain in good standing. If you're looking for more information like this, consider signing up for the free Venza Echo Digest. You'll get one email per month that combines all of our recent research, bringing cutting edge updates directly to you and we're gonna paste that into the chat for you there. If you're interested in pen testing, Pathfinder, or any of Venza's products that you've heard about today, please get in touch. We'd be happy to share more information with you. You can contact your customer success coach directly if you're a Venza client, or you can email us at sales at venzagroup.com, and a Venza representative will be in contact with you to help you learn more. Until next time, I'm Sean Shields, brand ambassador of Venza, where better visibility means better defense. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.